How's our financial plan coming? Super. Chris, any advice? With Western and Southern, preparing for your financial future can be easier than you think. Favorite receiver? Huh? To get started, visit westernsouthern.com. Welcome into PFF TV. Today we're going to talk about the underrated players from all 32 teams. Of course, we don't have time to talk about all 32 here. So we're going to talk about six. You can click the link in the description to see all 32. But Sam and I are going to highlight our favorites, your yeah. favorites. My favorites. More really your favorites. Yeah. But, you know, whatever. That's all of this is brought to you by our friends at Western and Southern. Be sure to check them out. All right, let's start off. With who better is more underrated than an offensive lineman? Let's talk about Ronnie Stanley. Mm, that's what PFF does best. We look at the offensive linemen, the guys in the trenches. There are no useful stats to point to. And that's why offensive linemen often go unlooked, because they don't rack up yardage. They don't tend to score touchdowns, though Quentin Nelson gave it a good shot this week. Uh, but they're the important things. They're the platform for the offense. They, get, they make the passing game work. They make the running game work. And I don't know that anybody is more underrated right now than Ronnie Stanley, who has become the most, uh, the best pass blocking left tackle in the game. Baltimore Ravens left tackle. Now, look, he's helped out a little bit by that scheme, right? It's a run heavy scheme with Lamar Jackson, but they do a ton of dropbacks. He's got 350 plus, plus pass blocking snaps and has allowed five total pressures. Five. five. That's it. It's in insane. whatever we are, 10, 11 games right now, five total pressures. That is a ridiculous number. No doubt. All right, let's move on to the Texans and look at defensive interior DJ Reader. This guy has a presence when he's pushing the pocket. Yeah, it's interesting. DJ Reader is a monstrous nose tackle, one of those 320 plus pound guys. And typically, you know, the league is not short of them, right? There's a lot of these run stuffing specialists, but not that many of them are actually any use when it comes to rushing the passer. And these are the old two down nose tackles that get taken off the field to put an extra defensive back on there. But DJ Reader has emerged as an actual pass rushing force as well. So he's, right now, he's our number five ranked interior defender along the defense. Um, he's got two fewer defensive stops than Aaron Donald. So anytime you're on that kind of list with Aaron Donald, you're doing something right. And he's been on the field for 200 less snaps than Aaron Donald. So he's doing it at a much better rate. But the real key is that he's also got 22 total pressures. He's been bringing some pass rush presence to this team. And that's higher than some of these pass rushing specialist interior guys like Ed Oliver, the rookie, like Jarrell Casey for the Titans. So he is rounding out into a truly dominant defensive lineman. Yeah, and at the right time, especially with J.J. Watt being out exactly. for the tex Texans, they need that pressure up front. Absolutely. All right, Austin Eckler, a running back. I, I mean, we don't talk about running backs. We don't praise them very often here at PFF. But Melvin Gordon holds out. He comes back. He's getting more carries than Austin Eckler per game. But this guy is a receiving running back, and he does it so well. Yeah, I think we're going on a couple of seasons now of Austin Eckler being one of the most underrated players in all of football. He got a chance earlier this year with Gordon holding out to show that he could be more than just a third down back, more than just a receiving option out of the backfield. And he did well there. You know, he's, he's good at running the ball, even between the tackles for a guy of his size. But he really is incredible as a receiving option. That's where he's at his best. He's our number one graded receiving back right now, 94.1. So anything above 90 is pretty incredible. 94 is getting into absolutely absurd territory. He leads the entire NFL in yards after the catch. You know, obviously a lot of the running back passes, they're caught behind the line of scrimmage. They get a lot of free yardage that way, but he leads the NFL in yards after the catch. And he's tied for number one in terms of broken tackles as a receiving back. So he is definitely one of the most underrated players in, in all of football. Yeah, no doubt. And Phillip Rivers isn't exactly having the best year. So no. throwing to a guy who can pick up a few extra yards after the catch is always a positive, right? Absolutely. Helping him out a lot. Always positive. So John Gruden called Darren Waller out. Early in Hard Knocks, before the season, he said it was going to be the best-kept secret in the league, and he kind of has been. Yeah, he's, he's right. I mean, Darren Waller's backstory is fascinating because really is. he came out of Georgia Tech, which back then was running this triple option system. There weren't, you know, one of those few college systems that ran the triple option, basically never passed the ball, was all runs, but he was a wide receiver for this triple option system, along with DeAndre Smelter. Those two guys actually formed a formidable 
wide receiver duo. Then he comes in the NFL, sort of bounces around, doesn't really stick anywhere. Now the Raiders convert into a move tight end. They, they, you know, they abandon the idea of just this outsized wide receiver, move him to tight end where he's actually a dynamic, athletic receiving threat. And he's really been incredible. He's currently PFF's number four ranked tight end overall, number three in receiving grade. He's just got one drop on 72 targets. He's become like a legitimate matchup problem for defenses. No doubt, he has been. Matt Filer, let's go back to the trenches and over to Pittsburgh. Matt Filer is a tackle for that team that you maybe have never heard of. He's pulled off the bench, but they need him in a big way when you have a backup quarterback out there. Yeah, it's interesting because the Steelers for years have had one of the most stable offensive lines in the NFL. They've had the same five guys. They haven't really been forced into the bench at all with injuries. It's, and, and it's been really good. It's been one of the better lines over that time. Suddenly they're forced to look for the next guy. And Matt Filer comes in, starts a right tackle, and he's been good. Um, he's allowed just two sacks this season despite having a quarterback that's not exactly going to help him out in terms he's of holding on to the out. ball. Right. Not getting the ball out of his hand as quickly, not as decisive as you want him to be. He's got a pass blocking grade of 80. That's a pretty good mark. And he's got the 11th best overall mark among all tackles. When you're forced to go to the next guy, you know, next man up, that's a pretty good return. Yeah. Mike Tomlin always finds a way to get the job done, doesn't he? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. And last but not least, we got to talk about Shaquille Griffin, cornerback from the Seattle Seahawks. This guy dropped a couple LBs and is back from his sophomore slump. And he's another interesting backstory as well, because this was a highly touted recruit coming out of high school, but chose to go to UCF because they were one of the teams that would take him and his brother as a kind of package deal. Shaquem Griffin mm -hmm. obviously is the linebacker with Seattle as well, who is missing his hand because mm -hmm. of a, you know, a problem, medical problem uh, shortly after birth. So Shaquille Griffin basically forego, foregone the, uh, the chance to, to go for a much higher, uh, better respected college went to UCF so he could play with his brother, comes out and you know, was a good college cornerback. There was a lot to like about him grading, his tendency to make pass breakups was all there. Did go through a rough year a season ago and things didn't look so rosy, but now we're bouncing back and we're seeing the kind of playmaking ability he has. He's got 12 pass breakups this year. So even if he hasn't got an interception, he's been making plays on the ball, making life difficult for receivers. And right now he's got a top 10 PFF coverage grade for cornerbacks. Yeah, he's been making plays on the field and climbing ranks here at PFF. You love to see that. Yep. All right, those are our underrated players that we are going to talk about, but all 32 are linked below as promised. Thanks for hanging out with us. I'm Shannon Ford. He's Sam Monson. You want to get rid of me and get back to more great PFF YouTube content? All you have to do is push that button right there and subscribe. Thanks for watching.